Hello everyone, it's Butter Bob, and this video is about protein. It's also about fat. It's about how much protein, how much fat. You know, this is a big question, it's a big debate, it's, it gets some really nasty comments on Facebook. It gets a lot of people all tore up, all the time. Even I, when I was first started making videos and first started my uh, Facebook page, you know, I was I would always tell people to get fat way up. You know, and it's bothered people. You'll go to other websites and they'll have charts. They'll have a chart that tells you the exact protein amount you need for uh, your height or your sex. Uh, knowing exactly how much protein you need. You know, guys, there is not a single creature on the face of this earth, not even one who is arrogant enough to calculate how much fat or protein they need to be healthy. Only man, only man thinks this way. And only man gets himself in trouble thinking this way. Guys, the most important thing you should know about your body is this. If you eat the right foods, your body will regulate the right amount of food for you. It will regulate the amount of protein and the amount of fat that is right for you. You know, is there an optimal amount of protein that you need to eat or fat that you need to eat? The answer is yes. Yes, there is. There's an optimal amount of protein you need to be healthy and fat. Guys, no one can know that for you. Any chart you see, don't let it tear you all to pieces because no one can know what your requirements are or what you need to be healthy. But you know that there is a someone who does know the answer to this question, and that is your own brain. You know, I'm coming to you with this video today, and you're looking at the video on your computer or on your phone or on whatever you device that you watch YouTube videos on. And you know behind the scenes, behind the workings of our little computer, there are uh, what we might call generations of software and hardware that has been developed over time by many, many people for a long period of time. And this software allows me to make a video upload it and it allows you to look at it anywhere you are in the world. It's a program that allows this activity between you and I. And you know, the very fact that you were born, the fact that you were conceived by your mother and father gave you a program. A program that tells you how to be a successful human being biologically. That's the truth. You inherited that, and that software program, that program that you have inside of you, that it's encoded into your system. Guys, this represents the work of thousands of generations, thousands of generations of living beings passing down the, the genes and the software of the most successful of that bunch, of your ancestors the ones who lived long enough to reproduce. And you have this marvelous system that tells you when to be hungry, how much to eat of certain foods, how, when to stop eating. What's the real problem? Why do we need to worry about our food? Well, you know, guys, this is the something I want to talk to you about that's really important. We, in the modern world, have started to eat foods that our ancestors never ate before. And there's some studies out in, in uh, the literature, especially in animals, that show us that when we eat the wrong foods, when we eat the foods that are highly, highly high in carbohydrates, and grains and sugars, that it messes up our internal feedback system that tells us when to eat and how much to eat. 
And I want to share some of those with you because I think this is going to bring the light why you probably don't need a little scale like this to figure out how much protein, how much fat. You know, this little scale here, it tells you the ounces. You can just put your food on there. And I know people that are so exacting, they, they make sure they get exactly the right amount. You know, guys, you don't need that. You don't really need that. Most of you don't. There may be a few of you that is in such trouble that you might need to be more exacting with your diet. But for the most part, most of you don't need that. I want to, I want to tell you about a study that was done about animals. In 2012, a study was done about do with dogs. It, they did five breeds of dogs, from a really small little dog all the way up to a St. Bernard. I think they had a Labrador Retriever. Uh, they had a Schnauzer in there. But anyway, they gave these dogs several different types of foods, five different types. Some of them had less protein. Some of them had more protein on a sliding scale. Some of them had a whole lot of sugar and, and added things in them. Some of them didn't. And you know what they found? No matter if it was a small dog or the big dog, the dogs, as they ate, tended to select for themselves unconsciously. They didn't know. The dogs just knew that program we've been talking about. They ate about 30% protein. They just self-selected it. They ate about 30% protein, about 63% fat, and the rest carbohydrate. Real small amount, I think it was 7% carbohydrate. These dogs, when they were allowed to eat from a variety of diets, they came up with about a 30% uh, protein ratio for the dog and about 63% fat. So these guys, these uh, scientists, they studying this, they want to know if there were any other studies that would kind of back up that self-selection thing. And they found a couple more studies. I'll share them with you. They found a 80, uh, 1983 study that uh, found about the same ratio. The dogs would select about a 30% protein ratio. They also found a 2003 study that dogs would self-select somewhere around 27% protein. And all these dogs uh, tended to select this diet, this 30% diet, 30% protein diet, if they were allowed to pick and choose from a variety of foods uh, from their self, if they weren't restricted. They also found that when the dog food had a lot of carbohydrates in it, like say, this one. I took these snapshots a few a uh, year or two ago. This one's got wheat flour. Look at this. Soybean meal, cereal food, corn syrup. I mean, look at the stuff that's in this uh, dog food here. It's pitiful. Here's another one. Ground yellow corn, corn gluten meal, chicken byproduct meal, soybean meal. Look guys, this is insane. When the dogs were faced with a diet of this kind of food, and look at this one. Here's another one for you. Here's a dog food that has about a 30% uh, protein, but look at the fat, 9% fat. That means it's got a whole lot of carbohydrate in it. The dogs are going to not get the nutrition that they want to self-select. They're going to overeat. That's just what they're going to do. There was a study in uh, 2011 called the Pet, the State of Pel Pet Health, and it was done by the Banfield Pet Hospital. That said that uh, that diabetes was one of the most growing things with dogs. 36 percent increase in diabetes with for dog canine diabetes, and about a I don't know I can't remember now 16 percent increase in cat diabetes. And the, one of the biggest problems with dogs and cats is they have uh, uh, dental problems from eating all this high carb food that they're not really designed by nature to eat. And uh, th this was a big study, guys. This is a study done on 
looking at the records, over two million dogs and four hundred and fifty thousand cats. You know, this is what's what's happening to us is also happening to our pets. And I'm not really wanting to focus on animals in this uh, in this uh, video, but these studies in animals tell us something about ourselves. If dogs and dogs will select a certain level of protein, are they the only ones that do it? No, they found something very interesting. If cats, for instance, cats, a domestic cat, this study found that cats, a domesticated cat, would self-select a 52% protein and a 36% fat and a 12% carbohydrate. If they were allowed to eat whatever they wanted, they would self-select those ratios. Now, they also have another study that they found with feral cats, cats that are, you know, maybe used to be domesticated, and now they're just out and about fending for themselves. And they found a very similar ratio uh, and it's probably because the, the cats that, uh, that were domesticated had more carbs available because the feral cats, the wild cats, uh, chose a 52% protein, the, about the same as the domesticated cats, but they picked a higher fat ratio, a 46% fat ratio and only a 2% carb ratio. Now this is with cats. When they were able to select their own food and eat to whatever their that little program that's in them said to eat, they selected the 52% protein. Now this is something to understand. Uh, mankind has a certain protein level that we need, and I've I've read that that's close to 15% or so. Uh, dogs seem to select about a 30%. Cats seem to select about a 52%. And, and we can go even further than that. They they actually did another study with wolves. And let me find it. The study with wolves also selected about a 52% protein and a 47% fat and 1% carbohydrate. And guys, they have done this study. They have done studies on pigs, on spiders, on different types of fish, on all sorts of animals. I mean, numerous. I found a lot while I was doing the research for this. Where they self-selected in nature, if they were eating the foods that they were pretty much designed to eat, they would almost always, no matter where they were, come up with a protein, fat, carbohydrate ratio that was about the same. This is important, guys. The problem is is that we are eating in our modern society foods that man was never designed or adapted to eat. You see, the ability to choose the right foods, the right percentages of foods, comes when we have available to us the foods that we were supposed to eat. When we are eating the right types of food, then our little internal program will pick the right foods to eat and the right percentage. See, the cow is designed to eat grass. But if you give it corn, it'll eat too much. The horse is the same way. You know, kids, little children, you give them candy and they'll eat it and eat it and eat it. These are foods that bypass our natural uh, inner thermostat that tells us how much to eat and how much not to eat. Guys, this is the, the most important thing I can tell you. This is why I tell you when you first start this diet, and, and I still do it to this day, keep your foods simple. Eat fried chicken. Eat a steak. Eat hamburger. Eat whole foods whole foods, not junk foods. And I also tell you, listen, don't make these elaborate recipes. These elaborate recipes bypass, tend to bypass our ability, ability to stop. You know, if you eat a steak, when you're full, you'll stop. You just will. You'll stop eating. 
and you will tend to select the right amount of protein, the right amount of fat. You don't have to worry about adding fat to your diet. You don't have to worry about adding protein to your diet if you eat the right foods. So what's the bottom line on this? Stop worrying about eating an exact percentage of fat. Stop worrying about trying to get the exact amount of protein in your life. Stop worrying about all these things. Make your diet simple. Eat foods that you know are low in carbs, high in protein, high in fat. And for some of you, you might have to go higher protein. Some of you might have to go higher fat. The point of the diet is to satisfy your internal uh, thermostat that tells you how much to eat. When that is satisfied and you feel the appetite control kick in by whatever percentage works for you, anybody that tells you that if you eat this exact thing and that exact thing and this exact percentage and that exact percentage is really just talking out of their of their head. They don't know what the heck they're talking about because everybody's different. I know people who cannot stand a, a, a very high percentage of fat in their diet. Now I'm not talking about eating a high calorie diet. I'm talking about eating a high fat percentage diet. I know people who don't do well with a high protein diet. They just don't do well on it. Anybody that tells you that high protein works better than high fat, it may for them but it may not for you. And if they're telling you that their way is right and your way is wrong, they are showing you that they don't know what they're talking about, period. Everyone is different. We all have different needs, different uh, requirements, different tastes, different problems. But here's what really works. Eating whole foods that we were designed to eat, like we've talked about in my other videos. You know that video I did on uh, the, the strong medicine of, of uh, hamburgers and steak? Listen, that, that took it down to a very basic level where if you're eating the foods that we pretty much are adapted to eat, if you eat those foods, your body will regulate the amount of food you need. Start your diet out with a, a very low carb percentage. Now that's something you may have to measure out because what we're trying to do, this is, we're trying to do a hack here. We're trying to do a body hack. We're going to take our insulin down by restricting carbs, very strict. Now listen, for some of you, you may have to restrict your carbs down to almost nothing. Some of you, I say start with about 20 grams a day. Uh, some of you could take it up much higher than that. I mean, much higher. Don't let anybody tell you that this is the exact amount of carbs that will work for every person. That's not true. I'm sorry. It's just not true. And, uh, you know, it depends on, on you on a lot of those things. It depends on your level of energy, your level of uh, uh, insulin resistance. But start. Start simple with a, about a 20 uh, grams of carbs a day. Then, just eat regular whole foods. Whole foods. Foods that are low in carbohydrates and high in, high in nutrition. Uh, meat. All meat is high in nutrition. I mean, it just is. Uh, greens. They're great for you. Eat those things. Eat them until you are satisfied. If you feel like that you're still hungry after you eat and you're feeling like that all the time, play with it a little bit. Maybe increase your fat a little bit. Not the amount of calories you eat, but the amount of fat you eat in your meal. Or if fat makes you sick, if you don't like it, this doesn't work for you, increase the protein a little bit. In other words, eat a little leaner meat or a little more fatty meat. See, Or add a little more fat, a little less fat. But here's the thing. When you do eat and your body says, stop eating, I'm done, you've satisfied me. And it will with real food. It will do that. Stop eating. 
because then your body's going to kick in during the fasting time to eat the big belly. It will start using that energy around your belly and your butt and your chinny chin chins. So don't stress about protein. Realize that there's many, many studies that tell us that animals all over the world, and it's obvious actually, but animals all over the world, insects up to the biggest animals, regulate how much protein and fat they eat so long as they're eating the foods that they were designed to eat. Period. There is not a single solitary animal in the world arrogant enough to believe they can calculate the exact amount of protein and fat that they eat. Can't do it. And even if you were a genius you could not possibly know how much protein or fat it was even in a hamburger that you eat. I mean, you can look at the label, but you don't know. You don't know where that animal was fed. You don't know, really. Oh, you can't know. But your body does know. Some expert on the Internet does not know with their charts and their snide remarks. They can't know this. But your body knows your body knows how much protein you need. And when you satisfy it, it stops being hungry. It knows how much fat you need. You'll, you'll see your brain light up and you'll feel better when you're eating the right amount. How does your body tell you you're not eating the right amount? It'll either make you super hungry, and that's what junk food does. You're super hungry because you're not getting what you need. Or it'll give you a craving. You know, uh, pregnant women, I mean, they, they get cravings for weird things. Why? I mean, it has to be that our body is trying to tell us that we need something and that we're not getting it. So it has ways of communicating with you. If, you, if your appetite is satisfied and you're feeling good, your energy level's up, you're not hungry, you feel good, your, your moods are good, don't worry about not eating. Don't worry about if you didn't make your protein macro today. Don't worry if you didn't get enough fat today. To forget about it. Thank goodness that we don't have to rely on weighing out our food. No animal on the face of the earth, no insect, no bird, no reptile has to weigh out its food. And we don't either. We give our body what it needs and it will find a way to get up to the optimal levels. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and keep those notes coming. I, I love seeing the notes from you guys, especially those of you that's lost so much weight or got your A1C good, or you're off your diabetes medicine. Guys, you have a wonderful, wonderful body. And if you can just feed it what it needs, it's going to create health for you. It really is. Get off the junk. Get your body off the junk. Get your dogs and cats off the junk. Get your animals off. Feed them what they're designed to, to eat, and they'll be more healthy too. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.